this tutorial is part two of the Every Watercolour Sky You'll Need series. I'm going to be painting a simple sky, a sunset sky, a stormy sky and a sky at night. I really hope you're going to enjoy this tutorial and it inspires you to paint more creative skies. Let's get started. The first painting here is I'm using my size 10 brush. I'm using a mixture of ultramarine and cerulean and I'm painting this sky wet in wet, leaving um, gaps for the clouds. So I'm going to paint richer, stronger paint at the top and just pale the colours, the blue colour, adding water to it towards the horizon to create depth and I'm going to make the cloud, um, the clouds going towards the horizon smaller as well. So it's quite a nice one to do. And I'm just using the same colour painting wet into wet in the sea area there as well. And this is from my imagination. So I've just created a sort of a very simple seascape and I've um, drawn in some distant land as well, which I will paint later wet on dry. This is the fun bit. You can actually lift out some more clouds with a paper towel. And it's really fun to do, especially if you're a beginner and the, the paper towel really is quite absorbent so it lifts off. You can use white tissue as well. So it's quite a nice technique to combine with the wet and wet techniques, leaving the gaps, the negative space for the clouds. So you can mix it up a little bit here. And I'm actually now painting some cloud shadows using a mix of ultramarine, a touch of pink and a touch of burnt sienna. A full list of all the materials I'm going to be using in this tutorial can be found in the description below, along with uh, the photo links to all the photographs I'm using as well. My next sky is a two stage sky. So I'm going to paint this first stage wet in wet let it dry and then paint the next stage, which is going to be the blue sky. So I'm just using some yellow here, painting yellow wet in wet, leaving a big gap there for the blue sky. And I've also wet the sea area as well. And that's going to be the yellow reflection in the sea. And I've masked out the sun and some of the lighter clouds on the horizon there. It's a really simple drawing this. I'm just tickling on some orange paint here with a mixture of the yellow and the red using my size 10 brush and I'm just painting it on the horizon here as well just building up these warmer colours. I'm painting in some shadow colours here using a mixture of ultramarine and pink with a tiny touch of burnt sienna and even a smidge of red paint, just varying these sort of dark shadows on the clouds on the right hand side. And I'm just painting a little bit of those shadows now towards the horizon as well, damp into damp. Onto my third nighttime sky here with the moon. I've actually masked out the moon and the stars with some masking fluid. But if you don't have any masking fluid, you could actually use white paint at the end of the painting. So I'm using my size 10 brush and I've used some pink and blue mixed together in the centre and then some Prussian blue around the outside. And then I've used some Payne's grey and Prussian blue at the really dark areas, really creamy paint, damp into damp.
This final sky is a stormy sky and it's a two-stage sky. It's just a really simple drawing. It's literally just a straight line on the horizon. I'm using yellow and burnt sienna and I'm painting it wet on wet. So you've got a nice warm glow as an underpainting. So I'll let this dry and then I'll paint the dark clouds on top later. What I'm doing now is I'm just painting a little bit of smaller darker clouds here and there as you can see from the reference photograph just to give it a little bit more interest. And I'm painting this with ultramarine and burnt sienna damp into damp. So I'm allow that to dry. I'm going back to my first painting and I'm mixing up a little bit of the ultramarine and the pink. Any pink will do. I'm painting this with my size 10 brush, wet on dry, just to create a little bit of interest and detail in this little painting. I've allowed my painting to dry actually and I'm going back into this nighttime night sky painting and I have sprayed the bottom part with the spritzer bottle and I'm just using a plastic card applying creamy watercolour paint to the damp surface to create sort of like a cityscape which is it kind of looks like that in the photograph and I'm using Payne's Grey, Ultramarine, Burnt Sienna and a little bit of pink here and there and maybe even a bit of Prussian Blue. quite pleased with that um, nighttime sky. So I'm going back now to the sunset. I've wet the paper very gently with soft brush. I'm mixing up some ultramarine and cerulean here, very pale wash, and I'm gonna paint the blue sky here, trying not to touch the yellow. So leave a little white gap there so it doesn't go green. It's really effective. And if you need to, use a small brush to paint small areas wet in wet. So as you saw there, I'm painting the sea wet into wet and damp into damp, still using that size 10 brush, using a mixture of the ultramarine, a touch of Payne's grey here and there, but leaving little gaps here and there so that the, the reflection of the sky is in the water there, that light reflection. Heading back to my first painting now, I'm just using a mixture of ultramarine with a smidge of burnt sienna and painting this wet on dry, just trying to create a little bit more interest and detail building up that dark just to bring that land forward there. I'm using a dry brush technique here, using a similar colour 
and just to create a little bit more dark and detail in the water as well. So back to my stormy seascape. It's all completely dried. Make sure it has because if you're doing what I'm doing here, it might move the paint. Use a soft brush and wet that paper gently, which is what I'm doing here. I'm mixing up lots of yummy darks. Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine, a little bit of Prussian Blue, a little bit of Blue and Pink, a bit of Payne's Grey, lots of dark colours. And some of them are going to be quite creamy as I apply them later on. It's all wet into wet, damp into damp. Just have fun, do a little bit of tilting, get that stormy sky looking very atmospheric. Leave lots of gaps in between for the light to come through as well. So I'm just painting the sea as well here using a bit of a dry brush technique so it's wet on dry using a bit of Prussian blue in the distance a bit of Payne's grey touch of ultramarine in the foreground here and just using the tip of my brush to paint a little bit more dark along the horizon there really get that looking dark and stormy and atmospheric. I've removed my masking fluid. Make sure you do this when the painting is dry. I'm using my size two brush and I'm painting around the sun with some orange. That's the red and yellow just to really bring out the light of that sun there and then just softening and blending as I paint away from the sun. So I'm using some white gouache now. You can use acrylic paint, white acrylic, white acrylic ink as well and even white watercolour paint. I've watered it down slightly and I've just spattered the nighttime sky. I thought it'd be also really nice to actually apply some of the white to the windows of the buildings so they look like the lights are on. It looks really effective and it brings that painting to life and I thought I might use some red and yellow as well to really add a little bit of colour to the buildings. Now for a little bit of artistic license. I thought it'd be quite nice to put a little sailing boat out there there in that dreadful storm. Um, I'm using the white gouache and I'm putting some reflection in the water as well. I thought it'd be quite nice to paint some birds in as well, just like little V shapes and just varying the size using my size two brush, working wet on dry. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful and inspirational and it gives you lots of ideas and methods and techniques of painting different skies in watercolour. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please put them in the comments section. And if you like this tutorial, why not subscribe if you haven't already to my YouTube channel where you will get updates of my latest videos. If you'd like to see the longer version with lots more voiceover, check out my Patreon membership. Details about that can be found in the top right hand corner of this video or in the description below. Thank you again for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.